Hi, we're Slaves on Dope. And I'm DMC in a place to be. And you're, you're watching, watching Loudwire. Well, personal experience um, from about, I've been sober 24 years. I don't think you do drugs, do you? No. No. So not, not much. I've um, been sober 12. Yeah, he's, so yeah. A lot of social commentary, a lot of social commentary, and a lot of play on words. The, the name "slaves on dope" is always it's like a double entendre. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, it's the, it's a it's kind of we're having having a little bit of fun with it, to, to, and and none of the song titles are in the lyrics, so that really confuses people even more. I think we were inspired when we I remember when I got Faith No More's um, "King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime," and they had standing naked in front of the computer, and I was like, this is the best title ever. <laughs> Health, food, and heroin. Um, I know that the well, the thing that jumps out at the beginning is that Ronald Reagan quote that we messed around with. Mm -hmm. uh, we we were like, let's put something on because on, on one of our records we had uh, our record from Inch Inches from the Mainline, the album we put out in 2000. The beginning of the record was Bill Clinton going, "I have a brother who's a drug addict. I'm very proud of him." So we thought it'd be cool to put another little presidential twist. So Kevin found this great quote um, yeah. from uh, Ronald Reagan, and uh, it just sets the tone for the song right away with the title. What's that song about, though? Do you remember? Uh, you know, it's about uh, some personal experiences right. and stuff. So, yeah, it's... They're um, all personal. Uh, that kind of goes back to the last one. The, all the lyrics are very personal, but they are, like, we're very big on the double entendre stuff. So we write about what we know, but we also make sure that it can be, it can be viewed in different ways. So, and the health, food, and heroin, the title came from the, um, it was a documentary I was watching on heroin addicts in Hawaii who basically shoot up all the time, but they eat all the avocados and mangoes wow. and bananas for free, but they shoot heroin. So they're super healthy lifestyle, minus the heroin addiction. <laughs> so that's, again, that's the irony that I like. I, I, that I find it compelling. How can you be a heroin addict, but like you, you're perfectly, you eat perfectly healthy food all the time, right? Well, um, <laughs> I was doing an interview uh, I, I, I have a show in Montreal, I work in radio, and I have, I have a show where I talk to people about music. And uh, a good friend of mine, Mitch Lafon, who's a rock journalist in Montreal, he, um, he Inter interviewed Dee. And he said, man, he goes, I, I, I know you're a big hip-hop fan, you're a big Run DMC fan. I just interviewed Daryl McDaniels. I was like, what? He goes, I might be able to get him for your show. I'll put you in contact with him. I reached out to Daryl. I said, Daryl, I'd love to have you on my show. He said, all right, just let me know when you all want me to come up. And I'm like, well, we can do it over the phone. And he's like, no, 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 I'll fly up. I'm like... We don't have a budget for that. He said, no, no, I'll pay for my own flight. And we're like, how nice is this guy? <laughs> so he comes to Montreal, and in, in, in between figuring out stuff with, um, with, with Daryl and with his, uh, his manager, Eric, and stuff, we were just going back and, through, back and forth with just details. And, and Mitch had told him to talk to Jason about his band, Slaves on Dope. Right, yeah, Mitch. Because I really, I really keep the two separate, right? Like when I work, when I'm doing stuff in media, I don't talk about my band because it's not right. my job. But it crept in, and Daryl um, was like, yeah, well, send me some stuff. So... We sent him scriptwriter, which we weren't even sure it was going to make the record. Sent it to Daryl, and he's like, "All right, I got my stuff written." And we're like, "Okay, we'll just see what happens." You know, like I'm, I'm not worried about it. And I was he, like, "Where do you want me to go? Right there, <laughs> twenty minutes, you know, two, you know, three minutes, and well, one minute and something." Yeah. And I'm waiting. I just I started writing and just wrote so much. And it all fit with the theme because that song really deals with insomnia. So, Which, and I never sleep. I was like, I love this song. It's talking about me. Yeah. And he came in and did it in Kevin's studio in like, oh, three, four takes, and we were just sitting there going, holy shit. Because I like working with really good bands. And they're a really good band. I'm someone that did it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, when I heard the song, I was like, here's this guy that can't sleep, and that's me. I never sleep. And for me, I wrote it from the point of, am I awake or am I sleeping? Or am I sleepwalking? You know, is this real or is it a dream? And then I said, is it God and the devil? Because where I'm at right now in life, there's no way that the devil could do this to me without God having his hand in it. You know what I'm saying? So I went through from that perspective of, 
the sleep could be the real world or the real world could be the sleep. So just the whole insomnia thing about it really, really caught me because really I don't sleep, which is true. And when we heard the lyrics, because we didn't hear anything, it's not like we were going to be like, well, we need that, you know, send it to us for approval. We're like, dude, he's coming, he's doing a part, we're just going to let him do it, and he's a legend. And we, first time we heard the lyrics, we're like, this guy nailed it. Like, he listened to the song. Yeah, I did. He didn't I just, did. like, write, you know, some bars. Yeah, I'm DMC in the place to yeah, be, and I'm in Montreal. That. Like, he, he A really, lot of rappers get on a song, he's, and the rhyme has nothing no, to do with the song. He wrote. He, 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 he wrote he wrote a song. Yeah. I listened he to the song. I probably listened to the song when I got the song. I probably um, before I wrote my rhyme, I probably only listened to the song like probably four times. No, it was great. I listened to it. And I was like, oh, good. I listened to it again. Then I waited. Then I listened to it again. And then um, I got up the next morning, took it to the gym with me. And when I was on the stairmaster, I listened to it. And that's when I started writing a rhyme. By the time I was finished at the gym, the whole rhyme was written. You should see his glutes ever since he's been listening. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Very inspirational. <laughs>